Hello friends, welcome back. Now I have a, a new playlist for you guys. So I'm having the Python in plate right now and uh, we are going to learn Python. So I'm already doing an image processing playlist which will uh, continue but in parallel I plan to continue this and uh, this will be a good learning I hope. And first of all I would uh, uh, thank you for all your consistent support and encouragement. I'm getting a lot of comments off late uh, saying that the modules are very good. I'll try to put in more efforts to make it better. Thank you very much. Let's first get into the session one, which talks about the fundas, the fundamentals. Why Python? First question. It is fast growing. It is most appreciated by the industry. All universities have this as a subject. It is having a rich community support. And yes, we have a playlist now next for it. But are these sufficient reasons for somebody to learn Python? I don't think so. So we need to have more technical reasons for somebody to appreciate Python. First one, it is very easy to learn. One can call it definitely a high level language. This supports object orientation. This is a very important aspect for any language which is growing and which has to be learned easily. Because objects permit you to learn things by modeling it with the real time examples, with real time feel you can handle it. Also Python permits you to integrate it with other languages. Python is definitely better than Perl. I have not used Perl till now, but people say so. Credits to uh, Guido Van Rossum, the creator of Python. He named it as he liked the published scripts written from Monty Python's Flying Circus. So this is a comedy series and he liked that and he termed Python from there. He is from Netherlands. And how old is Python? Don't be shocked. It is an elder brother of Java, R and JavaScript. It is very old. But we are learning it only now, realizing the features and the rich aspects of Python. We are late, but better late than ever. Let's learn the fundamentals first. Uh, let's run the Python program first, but before that we need to know how do we run it. First we need to download Python into your machine. It's harmless. You can visit python.org to get the executables for your machine. Please select the appropriate version and install. I am having a Windows 10 machine with me and I use Python 3.6.5. This is a free version. Anybody can use uh, Python. All of them are free. So just install and start working. If you have Linux, just follow the installation procedures as appropriately as you should and you are all set to go. You can get a lot of information from the link python.org about getting started and there are a lot of real community support available. People are really feeding in a lot of inputs here so you can really learn a lot from this community. Can we say hello world? Yes, it's time to say hello world. First, open an editor. I have a notepad plus plus. I prefer you to use that because it is very friendly as well as it is rich. Type the instructions for Python. Any command, any code that you want to type, you can type. Save the file with python.py, file name.py as the extension. .py says that it is a Python file. You need to now run it in the interpreter or you can go with two modes of running it. I will show you both. But when you have Linux, you need to choose chmod777 file name.py. It will convert this to executable file format, which will then be run with dot slash file name dot py. Let's start our first script, but I'm not going to make it a script now. Instead, I'm going to make it a command oriented approach right now. I have already installed Python, so you can see that I'm moving my pointer here. I'll change the pointer so that you can see the pointer with a better option. So I have typed Python in my command prompt of Windows. So I got Python, it's already installed. I am typing triple arrow is there. This is the uh, prompt. This is the uh, indication that you need to understand that the Python is all fine and you can start typing stuff. Print in the bracket, double colon, I mean double quotes, hello world. And it will be printed just like that. You can see that I have put in a semicolon here and no semicolon here in the next example. I mean the first example, it is absolutely all fine. But when I have not closed it and I pressed enter, it is showing me that it is incomplete. This is the command approach for Python. You can just open the Python, start typing commands like stuff there. It is not a script. I have not stored it in a file, but you can see that it is working fine. Now, how do you come out of it? I need to type exit bracket and that takes you out of a Python mode. And when you press control Z, you are out of it as well. Now, these two are the options that you can follow to come out of it. Now let's start a file based execution. Open a file in Notepad++. Just type print 
hello world as I have typed in front of you. Save it as one dot py. Dot py says that it is a Python file. Now you need to go to the same directory as I have gone there. C colon users freeram kv in the desktop I have got the Python playlist. So I have gone there. Now to run it, I need to type python space one dot py. When I do it, I get the output hello world. It's very simple, but yet very effective. We need to play some number games now. Let's understand the numbers. You can see here three without space plus without space five. It gives me eight. Three space plus space five. It gives me eight. So the space is immaterial. I can use the space or not. It is absolutely up to me. There is no problem. And it is absolutely okay with Python to have or not have the space. This is spacing constraints are not there. They can be free. Now let's divide uh, a number by zero. So we know divide by zero error, right? So I'm going to try the same thing right now. So 10 by two is five. You can see 10 by zero. It says that division by zero error. It is called zero division error. So in Python also, you cannot divide a number by zero and we get zero division error clearly available in front of you. Let's multiply and add numbers right now. How do you multiply? Very simple, 10 single star three, double star has got a different meaning. I'll tell you that later. 10 into three is 30 with space, without space as I, I have tried. And these two are integers. Now when I go into float mode, the result will come in float mode. 10 dot zero star three dot zero, I get 30. 10 plus 2 is 12, 10 plus 2 is 12 and 10 dot 0 plus 2 dot 0 is 12 dot 0. So when you make it integer, you get it as integer. When you make it float, you get it as float. It's absolutely easy. So remember, space is not a problem. Single star is for multiplication, plus is for addition. Now, I'm going to divide again, but we need to get the quotient and remainder. For me to get quotient and remainder, I need to use double slash and mod operator respectively. Double slash will get me the quotient, model operator will get me remainder. For example, 10 double slash 2 will get me 5, 10 double slash 3 will get me 3, this is quotient. 10 modulo 3 will get me remainder which is nothing but 1. So when you want to get the quotient and remainder, you got to follow this approach. And we need to learn the variable right now in Python. It is automatic people call it, means the memory allocation happens as soon as the value gets assigned to the variable. The name of the variable is equal to value stored in the variable. When you assign the value to a variable, the memory gets automatically allocated to it. One example will be easier for you now. Value, this is the code again. This is a one dot py Python script. Value equal to 99, miles equal to 999.9, .9, name Sriram. Print value, print miles, print name. Now, these are all the variables. They get assigned with the values that I move on from here to here. And when I print it, I'll get all here absolutely fine. And please remember, this is all very important and we are going to code more with this fundas. Now we need to understand the data types. Yes, any number like one, two, three, hundred can be called integers. The bigger numbers like something which I have flashed on the screen right now, it is so big, should be called as uh, long integers, which means the number should be suffixed with a small l or an uppercase l. Any number like 3.25, 1.258 should be called floating point numbers. Any numbers like 10 plus 8i, minus 9 plus 7i, they are complex and they are called complex numbers. The learning shall grow. I hope this is an interesting playlist. If you have any suggestions, inputs, please go ahead and type it in the comment section. If you like the content, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you.